Hello, and welcome to my tiny little corner of the internet, and oh boy, oh boy, look what we have here today. It's a good old-fashioned PS2-style 3D beat-em-up. So first off, I want to say that I view these types of games in a somewhat weird way. Uh, games like Devil May Cry and Seven Samurai exist within the same general area of my brain. Now these two games specifically are wildly different in gameplay and in quality. Uh, Devil May Cry is a character action game, or and just an action game. It's like God Hand or Beautiful Joe, or more specifically like Revengeance or Bayonetta. A highly skill-based, fast-paced melee combo fest. I adore these types of games. Now, Seven Samurai 20XX is much more of a beat-em-up. It's akin to games like Shadow of Rome, Death by Degrees, Path of Neo, Yakuza, or even the Musou games. These types of games were everywhere in the PS2 era, and honestly, I adored them as a kid. It's the 3D evolution of the classic beat-em-up games of old, like Final Fight and Streets of Rage. It's more of a one-to-one -one progression, right? Whereas DMC basically combined a beat-em-up style skeleton with very tight fighting game-like mechanics, uh, mild RPG elements, and a little bit of survival horror style exploration thrown in. To be honest with you, when it comes down to raw combat mechanics, DMC uh, and games like it have more in common with fighting games rather than beat-em-ups. Beat-em-ups, to me, are usually characterized by their fairly low skill ceiling and floor. That's not always the case, but usually it is. There's almost always a small list of moves and not much room for creativity. To put it as concisely as I can, I guess it's all about hammering the square button and watching bad guys go flying. <laughs> It's about looking at your character's cool animations and just the small joy of punching stuff. And of course, some games really ride the line between beat-em-up and action game, like God Hand, where obviously it's heavily inspired by old Capcom beat-em-ups, but its gameplay is so refined, sharp, and heavily skill-based that I wouldn't consider it a beat-em-up as it gives me that same DMC feeling. To me, it's an action game with a beat-em-up flavor. So if I see them as so different, then why do I still kind of place them in the same area in my mind? Well, I guess it's because they all give me that same enjoyable sense of punching and slashing stuff. My stupid moron brain just loves the raw basic joy of smacking things in a 3D video game world. These two styles of games have always kind of been under the same umbrella in my head. Except, I thought for a while, beat-em-ups were kind of shitty. I only recently, within like the last year, started to enjoy the simple punchy games again, <laughs> like I did when I was a kid. Because when I was a kid, I loved these hack and slash beat em up style games, and games like Devil May Cry were way too hard for me. But eventually I got older, and I felt as though I quote unquote graduated into being able to understand how to play games like Devil May Cry 3. Once I played Devil May Cry 3 for the first time, I basically quit playing any beat-em-ups. I would think to myself, this is just a worse version of the genre that DMC created and perfected. For a while, games like Devil May Cry were fairly uncommon, so I kind of felt like I hadn't had my fill of fast-paced, difficult, and mechanically tight melee games. But now, in today's age, there's not a shortage anymore. Devil May Cry 5 exists, and that might be one of the best action games, if not the best action game ever made. And also, you know what? Demon Souls changed everything. It basically ushered in the new era of melee action games. It spawned games like Sekiro and Bloodborne, and even games like Neo and Code Vein. I love Dark Souls clones, honestly, because it's a fantastically brilliant way of making a melee combat-focused game that I really dig. And on top of all of that, I started playing Tekken 7 about three years ago now, and honestly, my itch for highly skill-based punching and kicking is now thoroughly scratched. I don't look at beat-em-ups and say, well, that's just lost potential. I don't play Yakuza and say, dang, I wish the combat were more complex. And I don't roll my eyes at the mindless chopping and slicing of Musou games anymore. Because I've played so many great games that satisfy my interest in high-octane, skill-ripping action. <laughs> I can kind of just look at these old PS2 beat-em-ups and love them like I used to when I was a kid, for what they really are now, rather than for what I want them to be. 
I've come to embrace my dumb person, stupid love of mindlessly slamming square and triangle to pummel simple CPU bad guys to pieces. You could really say that I love beating them up. All right, sorry. Uh, so I feel <laughs> that uh, I've got a whole new world of silly beat em ups out there that I've totally ignored. I would, I, I want to explore the genre that I discarded so easily in the past. I want to find some fun beat em ups. So why not start this journey off by playing a game that I've been interested in playing for a little while now? All right. Okay. Now that my lengthy, pretentious, and pointless explanation of my arbitrary categorization of punchy games is finally over, we can talk about this stupid, beautifully silly, stupid game. <laughs> the Bouncer is an early PS2 beat 'em up by Square Enix. You know the Final Fantasy fellers. They made three of my favorite games of all time. Uh, three of which are Final Fantasy games. What's really dope about The Bouncer, though, is it's directed by the guy who directed and did the original game design for the first two Tekken games, Saichi Ishii. And wow, does that sound like a good sign when it comes to the gameplay. That's what I thought to myself when I was checking out this game. I was like, hey, I don't know, maybe it will be more akin to a DMC-style action game rather than a clunky PS2 garbage fest. And, well, no, I was wrong. It's the latter. <laughs> Uh, look, this game hasn't discouraged me from checking out more beat-em-ups, uh, of this era, but this is not a great start in trying to find a fun one. This combat is clunky, it feels sluggish and unresponsive, and what I mean exactly by unresponsive is that sometimes button presses don't work correctly because this game uses my least favorite aspect of the PS2, and really the only negative thing about the console for me, and that's its pressure-sensitive buttons. For example, there are two different square, triangle, X, and circle attacks, one where you press lightly, and one where you press hard. This feels awful to me. The pressure needed to get the intended attack seems very finicky and hard to do consistently. It's made even more hard to control when you have to do different types of pressured button presses in a string to do a combo, like square light press, square light press, then square hard press, for example. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there, especially avid PS2 people, that don't have a problem with this at all, but for me it's, it's just not very precise and it kind of makes the combat system specifically needlessly annoying. This pressure sensitive button control gimmick is very rarely used on most PS2 games, so when I do see it pop up, it makes it all the more difficult because I'm not used to it. I just don't like the idea of having to press down with more force than necessary to get the button to do its initial little click. Anyways, this aspect isn't the only problem with the bouncer's combat. It also has no rhythm to it. It feels like enemies just attack and block randomly and there's no clear telegraphs for attacks and block only works from the front so it's easy to get blindsided as well. This game just feels dirty and dare I say cheap. But the cheapness isn't just on the CPU side, because I cheesed this whole game. <laughs> uh, check out this sick, high-level Oki Vortex setup I masterminded. Yeah, now that is fun gameplay. Honestly though, I will admit, there's a small amount of enjoyment I had in just trying to figure out the best ways to cheese the game in certain situations. It actually took a little bit of strategy. This game somehow feels easy and unfair at the same time. <laughs> like, the game is really just about whether the game can cheese me before I cheese it. Overall, the bouncer's combat is pretty shallow. Sure, there are a few unlockable moves, which would be pretty cool if they were a little bit more fun to use. Most of them just kind of feel useless. Some attacks do feel good, though, like the Scion square-square combo that launches enemies into the air. This feeling the attack gives me is what I wanted the whole game to be. It's just silly to see this goofy uppercut combo blast enemies into the air, and it also looks a lot like a, a jack string from Tekken. I mean, this is the beat-em-up satisfaction I was looking for. Too bad it really only exists in this one move for me. 
At the beginning of each level, you get to choose from three different characters throughout the game, and depending on which ones you choose at certain times, it can give you one of the alternate endings. They all have their own unique attack animations and upgrades, and I will say that the animations do look fantastic. Surprisingly, a lot of their moves look genuinely cool and flashy in a slightly more grounded way. I really think they all look fluid and fun. I chose to play through the whole game as Scion here solely because of the aforementioned square-square uppercut combo. The game is actually very, very short. It's about an hour and a half long, which really makes me personally a lot less bummed about it not being very fun because you can just breeze through it. I'm really just here for the silly characters anyways, so I kind of like how short it is. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there is a lot of replay value in the bouncer. I mean, the game expects you to play through it multiple times. It even has a clear counter in the save screen. It has alternate endings, multiple characters with their own upgrades, an extra mode once you beat the game, a survival mode, and even a versus mode where you can play as unlockable characters from the game and goof around with them. These all contribute to making the game a little bit more interesting. This would all be, really, a lot cooler if the game was actually fun to play. <laughs> Unfortunately, the efforts in trying to add some depth to what you can do in the game fall flat because its foundation of beating them up is severely lacking. It's a bummer that Saichi Ishii didn't take uh, much of that Tekken magic and put it into the bouncer. Oh well, at least he's still an amazing developer. <laughs> no kidding. There's a lot of good talent that worked on this game. Noriko Matsueda is the composer, and she did the OST for Final Fantasy X-2 and even one song in Chrono Trigger. Boss Battle 1, to be precise. And the guy directing this alongside Saichi Ishii is Takashi Tokita, one of the guys uh, credited in helping direct Chrono Trigger. And, well, how could I not mention what I would consider to be the most integral part of the team, Tetsuya Nomura, the character designer. I love this guy. I adore his ridiculous, preposterous, insane, impractical, zipper-riddled, uncompromised character designs. I love this guy's design work like I love Hirohiko Araki's designs. Tetsuya Nomura's completely outlandish sense of fashion brings me so much joy. <laughs> it makes my heart sing whenever I see a character with zippers in the middle of their shoes. It's pure, hilariously unrestrained creativity. And the time that this game was made, this was the heyday for Nomura. This was the time of Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy X. And let me tell you something, I love all the character designs in Final Fantasy X. Yes, all of them. Nomura's specific brand of design and style is in full force here in the bouncer. This is why I'm here. This is why I wanted to play this game. It's for this silly, silly character designs and this weirdo box art. I mean, look at this guy. I don't care if the gameplay is bad. I just want to see some ridiculous looking characters. <laughs> I love to draw. I've been doing it since forever, and I love drawing characters more than anything. Coming up with what I think are cool and interesting character designs has been a pastime of mine for a long, long time. So in turn, I love seeing character designs. And for me, the weirder the better. I love a wide variety of character designs, and I have played games solely because the art style and aesthetic looked cool to me. The look of a game and its characters go a long, long way in my anime may filled pea brain. Nomura has this specific way of designing people that is so creatively silly and just plain stupid that I can't help but love it. I mean, okay, look at these dorks. You got this fucking guy, Volt. Jesus Christ, my God, where do I start? <laughs> He's got blue jeans rolled up to his goddamn knees. That alone is is so ridiculous, it kind of overshadows his other aesthetic peculiarities. He's rocking that leather jacket with no shirt underneath, a very bold move, and oh, how could I forget, he's got some really intense body mods in the form of a large amount of facial piercings and a pair of fucking horns. This character looks so dumb overall, and the way his character is so serious all the time just makes the fact that he does look so dumb even funnier to me. Bionoi technology. Durakan. 
You didn't. Oh, and I really like the no escape cactar patch he has. I would genuinely wear something like that in real life. I'm actually serious. Okay, so now we have Ko here, and this guy likes to hike his pants all the way up, real high and tight, and that looks just splendid. He's got his whole body blasted, and he's letting everybody know by sporting a sick, extra short leather vest so his super cool chest hats are always on display. And he's even got a sick forehead tattoo to really round out the whole look. What's kind of neat, though, is he is voiced by Steve Bloom, so that's fun. My amazing skills are going to go to waste if I don't use them. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, now it's time for my favorite design of the three main characters, and it's the guy himself. Sion Barzad. I... I love that name. <laughs> it's like something me and my friends would come up with when we were 10. This fucking dork is dressing in the highest end dog street fashion with his short sleeve zipper hoodie that, like his two buddies, he rocks with no shirt underneath. What's with these guys and their disinterest in undershirts? Is it a bouncer thing? I don't know. <laughs> Cyan here is also decked out in... Only the most preposterous and obnoxious looking jewelry. I mean, you gotta just love that dog collar with the giant chain and obnoxious medallion hanging off of it. <laughs> My favorite part is that you can hear it jingle in almost all of his cutscenes. Oh, and let's not forget his little band-aid on his face so that you know he's a rough and tumble guy. Overall, he looks like if Sora grew up and became an asshole. All these characters have this alt-metal, emo, goth-punk, hardcore, tough guy vibe that I love. It's so silly because it reeks of Nomura trying to design very badass characters that look like they fit right into the rough nightlife world of being a bouncer for bars. But he ended up shooting way past the finish line into the stratosphere and made just outrageously ridiculous people that I can't help but love the sheer absurdity of. Dominique here is the character that the whole story revolves around, and I actually legitimately like her design. It's my favorite in the game. I love the jacket and her silly hat. Just the right amount of weird and genuine cool. And comparably subtle when put next to the rest of the cast. The bad guy designs are... Just as fun to look at. I mean, look at Echidna here. This boss, man, she has easily the stupidest looking hair I've ever seen on a character. And I watch a lot of anime. Oh, and look at Scion's master here. And what an absolute goofball he is. We're supposed to take this guy seriously, too. And there's this dude who's rocking the black leather gimp suit with the red sunglasses and slick back white spiky dread things. This guy is actually my favorite bad guy, as he's fun to watch, and he has a enjoyably silly voice. The voice actor here is having a really good time with these dumb, stupid lines. I can't wait to butcher all of you! <laughs> what really adds to these character designs being so funny is that the game takes these characters so seriously. It is genuinely trying to have this melodramatic, drama, emotional, tear jerk and fest, and it's just not working when you have characters look so fucking stupid like this. Sian! Always getting me in trouble. You had me worried. It has a very adverse effect. Every time it tries to be serious and make me feel sad, it's just hilarious. I, I love it. Overall, just seeing the absurd character designs in the game is worth playing all the way through just to see every cutscene. I mean, the music in the game is pretty good at times, honestly, and I really do like this intro song because I feel it almost perfectly encapsulates the vibe of the entire game. It's over the top, fast and silly, and it's a futile attempt to be badass while also being mildly annoying. <laughs> Thank you. 
even the cinematography and the cutscenes is enjoyable and interesting, and it really does a good job in showing these preposterous looking characters do cool badass guy stuff. But that's where the reasons to play through this game's story end, because I would never suggest playing this game for its riveting narrative, because uh, there isn't one. The game is constructed almost entirely out of cliches and tropes that we've all seen a million times. Contrary to the impression that the extremely unique character designs would give you. I mean, the whole game is a save the princess story, for crying out loud. There's zero character development, and we really barely even know who the characters are. Their backstories are dumped onto us and hastily rattled off spurts of exposition and through some flavor text during loading screens. At one point we find out that Scion has a master and the game just treats this like we're supposed to be invested in this character even though we've never seen him before. He dies and it acts like it's this big emotional uh, scene but it's meaningless because we don't know this character. The basic gist of the story is that there's this girl named Dominique. She's romantically involved with Scion or something, and him and his two bouncer buddies all need to go save the day when she gets abducted. So as the game goes on, some stuff gets revealed, like Dominique is actually a robot copy of the main bad guy's dead sister, and she's uh, very powerful and can do a lot of damage, and he wants to use her for evil stuff. Scion has this old girlfriend that died, and she gets brought back as well as a robot by that same guy. Uh, he's like trying to get over the mourning of his lost girlfriend, but his character is just kind of annoying, whiny, and grumpy all the time. Which is very silly, because his character looks like he should be just a big old goofball, but he's actually just uh, kind of a pissy asshole. I'm honestly so uninterested in the story, aside from its unintentional hilarity, that I'm not going to really get into a detailed explanation of it, because I just don't really feel like there's any point. It's just filled with bad pacing, terrible character development, cliched character motivations, and moments that are so unaffective in being emotional that it would just be intensely boring uh, if it weren't full of these hilarious character designs. I mean, the game just takes itself way too seriously. I mean, look at this guy. We're supposed to be emotionally invested in this guy? <laughs> I mean, it's far from impossible to make ridiculously designed characters have emotional depth. Uh, JoJo is the shining example of this. But it works in JoJo because it doesn't take itself seriously 100% of the time. There are plenty of intentionally goofy moments, and when it does get serious, it's very effective because, well... It's actually written well. <laughs> Without solid writing, these character designs just stick out even more. And for me personally, that's great. I think it's hilarious. But it just doesn't really work for what it's trying to do. Like I said, I mean, there is enjoyment to be had from this story. But it's from things like it's very wooden acting coming out of these stupid looking characters. It's things like it's uh, exposition dumps that come out of nowhere. And it's insistence on simply trying too hard is within itself inherently kind of funny. It's a good one to goof on and there is plenty of stupid lines that got a good laugh out of me. I mean sorry for not getting into the story more honestly but it's just so convoluted while also being so short and lacking that it's a miracle I even remember what happened. <laughs> Needless to say, uh, just watching these characters do and say stupid stuff while looking like total goofballs is the meat and potatoes of the story for me. When it's all said and done, The Bouncer is an ambitious project. It absolutely is. I think it looks amazing for the time that it was released. This is a pretty early PS2 game, and it looks great. It attempted to be something different. It just lacks a solid foundation of good fighting mechanics and an actually competent story. The fact that the bouncer is so short makes me kind of love it. It's definitely worth playing. It's a fun, stupid ride, and it's worth it just to look at these weirdos. Well, that's one down on my search for a good beat em up game. <laughs> uh, not going so great, but we're just going to keep on pressing forward. Hey, if you like the video, um, subscribe. That'd be awesome. I want to keep doing more stuff. This is fun. And I need this outlet because my friends are sick of me talking about things like the bouncer to them. I, I need to ramble about it somewhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, adios.